Hello and welcome to the 2022 Maryland Region Art and Writing Awards. I'm Jacqueline Downs from the Baltimore Office of Promotion in the Arts, the Maryland affiliate for the awards. We are excited to be celebrating some of the most creative teens in our state with a virtual ceremony. Our region received more than 3,000 visual and literary arts submissions. Congratulations to all of our award recipients. Let's get the show started. First, a word from the Executive Director of the Alliance for Young Artists and Writers, Christopher Wisniewski. Hi, everyone. My name is Christopher Wisniewski, and I am the Executive Director of the Alliance for Young Artists and Writers, which is the nonprofit organization that presents the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. This is the award's 99th year, and across the country, nearly 150,000 teens submitted their art and writing to this year's awards. To everyone who's receiving a gold key, silver key, or honorable mention today, congratulations. You're being recognized for your originality, skill, and the emergence of your unique personal voice or vision. This accomplishment is yours, but I also want to acknowledge the teachers who have helped you and supported you along the way as well as your parents, families, friends, mentors, guidance counselors, and everybody else who's encouraged you to find your voice and express your vision. The awards are only possible because of the work of our regional partners who administer local programs. They're the ones who process entries, arrange expert panels of judges, and pull together celebrations like the one you're experiencing today. The work may seem invisible, but it is essential. Thank you all. I want to express my deepest appreciation to the hardworking staff of the Alliance for Young Artists and Writers. I'd also like to acknowledge the Alliance's many institutional and individual donors who helped to make our work possible, including Scholastic Inc., the M.R. Robinson Fund, New York Life Foundation, Command Companies, the Herb Block Foundation, the New York Times, and Blick Art Materials. For those of you who are still in high school or junior high, I hope that you'll consider entering your art and writing in next year's awards when the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards turn 100. And once more, for everybody who's receiving a gold key, silver key, or honorable mention in the 99th Scholastic Art and Writing Awards, I say congratulations. I'm JC Braden, and I've received an American Visions nomination for my drawing and illustration titled Fresh Perspectives on Old Conversations. I had an assignment to create an illustration that had multiple perspectives in it, and I knew I wanted to depict a conversation because I have an interest in the ways we communicate as humans. The next day, I took some pictures of my friends having a conversation, and by creating an illustration out of these pictures, I was able to capture how the ways we non-verbally communicate can give us fresh perspectives on the same old conversations. Your friends will not understand why you can't hang out this weekend. You will tell them you're getting your hair done tomorrow. They will be confused. You will wonder what is so hard to understand. They will ask you why you can't just come to the mall after you get your hair done. You will put the group chat on mute. Sunday then? I got a factor in recovery time, Ava. My name is Amanda Amadi Amina, and I received an American Voice nomination for my poem titled, You Are Getting Box Breaks. Hi, my name is Andrew Kang and I want a gold key for my poems, I Will Waste My Life and Boxed In. I was inspired to write because I was feeling pretty confused and frustrated about identity and writing really helped me organize my thoughts. I Will Waste My Life deals with what it means to be a writer and assimilation into colonial institutions while Boxed In is a personal commentary about hyphenated identities in America. I write because I want to share the feeling that I get from writing and reading with others. I also want to shed light on real world issues, both past and present, especially with historical fiction. And I also want to take readers out of the world they are in and into another, much like my favorite novels have done for me in the past. I won the Gold Key Award for my flash fiction piece entitled All the Words Left Unspoken. My name is Emily Garibrandt, and I want to thank the Scholastic Arts and Writing Awards for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. 
My name is Haley Greaves, and I received a Gold Key Scholastic Writing Award for my dramatic script titled Dirty Malt. I write because it gives me a creative outlet where my stories and ideas can be shared with and enjoyed by others. Writing also gives me the chance to inspire people like others have once inspired me, which I believe is an amazing opportunity that shouldn't be overlooked. I write because I enjoy it and because I value representation in storytelling. I mostly write fiction and fantasy, so I try to include that genre while also including Black representation, such as appreciating Black hair. My name is Yahara Gwe. I won three gold keys, one silver key, three honorable mentions, one of them including my writing portfolio titled Supernatural Hair, and one American Voices nomination for my short story titled The Magical Pills. Hello, I am Janine Collins, Arts Educator Administrator and Scholastic Coordinator at the Baltimore Office of Promotion in the Arts. You submitted some of the most creative, inspirational, and enlightening work this year. Your interpretation of the world through color and touch was amazing. Not only are you creative, but your work is full of life stories. You can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. Maya Angelou. That is a great quote that perfectly describes your journey. It perfectly describes you. You have so much to give and so much more inside. And what you've shown the world so far is that you are going to run with art and creativity abundantly. Thank you also to our parents and committed educators. In addition, our generous partners at Blick Arts Materials and Utrecht Art Supplies. They have provided gift cards to recognize outstanding educators in our region. Some of those educators are here today to say thank you and have a message for our students. Hi, I'm April Steele. My school community calls me Mix April and I use they them pronouns. I'm an art educator at Creative City Public Charter and in Green School in Baltimore City. First, I want to thank the Scholastic Awards, BOPA, Blick Art Materials, and Utrecht Art Supplies for making this award possible. This award wouldn't be possible without all of my school community members, the incredible leadership, and the students and families who allow me to be a part of their educational journey. They allow me to be my most authentic self as an individual and education professional. And they all continually inspire me to be a part of this amazing community that focuses on empowering children through education. Thank you again and congratulations to all of the award recipients in 2022. Hey everyone, my name is Matthew Adelberg. I'm the Fine Arts Department Chair at Baltimore Polytechnic Institute, an absolutely incredible high school in Baltimore City, Maryland. Um, I wanna just get started by thanking Blick Art Materials and Utrecht Art Supply, uh, as well as Scholastics for all of their work to empower and uplift our students in the arts, especially during such a difficult time. Um, and I wanna shout out all of our student award winners this year, congratulations. I'm so happy your work is getting recognized and that your work is being seen uh, here in Maryland and across the country. Uh, so well deserved. Keep up the great work. Thank you. School during COVID sucked. For the time that it was pass fail, I completely just disregarded anything I didn't want to do or anything that took too long because I just didn't have to because I was already going to uh, pass all my classes with an A. And even if it, when it wasn't pass fail, I just didn't have any motivation to do anything. It was too easy not to pay attention and not to have to do anything because there was no hard fast deadlines. Everything was really simple. Everything was really easy and super boring. And I don't know, I just, everything was so easy not to do anything that I just let myself coast and slip by. One of the hardest parts about virtual learning or learning during COVID was having to stare at a screen for seven hours a day and be glued to my desk without any interaction with teachers or students or classmates. Uh, I think that took a really big toll on me and my learning and I really missed being able to be in person and talk to teachers and classmates and learn that way when we were virtual. COVID was not kind to me during the school year. I found that I had a lot of trouble concentrating and staying motivated to do my homework and to actually learn the material. I also missed seeing my friends a lot, uh, which was one of the only things that I really liked about school going into junior year. And also, you know, moving clubs online was really hard and not being able to work as a team was tough. 
so online school for me um it was like really stressful but it also didn't really feel like it existed at the same time like the in-school stress of seeing people and being present in the moment was gone but like this still like the, the lingering feeling of assignments and stuff was still left over from it and it was just kind of this weird gray feeling the whole time it didn't really feel like it was real something that i didn't realize i needed so much until after online school was in full effect was i really needed the feeling of being able to stand up and physically go to different classrooms throughout the day um when online school happened the only thing you could really do was sit in one place and look at one screen for the entirety of the day and i feel like that was very draining for me i think during the covid pandemic people focused a lot more on the large scale effects of the virus and reasonably so but that made me inspired to create a piece that focused on something smaller um that being my life and my classmates lives during that pandemic my name is michelle lee and i received an american visions nomination for my film and animation titled static progression my name is josephine halushka and i received an american voices nomination for my poem titled teenage girls the revolution because everyone else will write them everyone else will attempt to inscribe them the mommy blogs and romance novelists, the insistent men who say they know what girls are missing, the brothers who dismissively push misogyny to history. Let me describe them. These girls who refuse to be islands, these aliens of native province, nuns at the altar of the goddess. I'm not asking. I'm tasking myself with recording a page of a book on a shelf that extends past the world's end, a library that grows with every breath, with every hand, with every friend. I fell in love with swords. Now I write them with my pen. When I complete a work or when I consider it completed, I feel very accomplished and very satisfied with what I've done. So, my name is Bianca Rosanabwe, and I won a Gold Key Award for my poetry, titled A Poetry Collection by Bianca Rosanabwe. It's just a wonderful title. And I also received two honorable mentions for my art, titled A Chef's Day and Love. They're very nice, you should go check them out. Thank you. Hi, my name is Anna Ritter, and I won the Silver Key Award for my short story titled Morning in Moments. When I first completed this work, I am, was so proud of myself and so relieved that I was able to finish it. I'm so thankful to win this award and how I'm able to share this story with everyone and how it was recognized. Again, thank you so much for this opportunity. Hi, my name is Galila Ibrahim. The way that I feel when I complete an artwork is one, an overwhelming sense of relief. I'm so happy it's done. And then I feel a little bit sad afterwards because I really enjoy the process of making work and seeing it develop as time goes on. Um, and I won the Gold Key Award for my artwork called Working Man, depicting the struggles of the working class and as an elderly um, African-American male who's trying to work their way up in the world. I would definitely say it's difficult to truly pinpoint an emotion or feeling after I've completed writing one of my pieces. However, I will say that there's definitely a feeling of anticipation or hope for change since majority of my writing centers around advocacy and enacting much needed change. My name is Summer Nelson and I received a Silver Key Award for my poem, A Whittle Problem. Hello, I'm Donna Drew Sawyer, CEO of the Baltimore Office of Promotion in the Arts and I am thrilled to recognize all of this year's award recipients. The Scholastic Art and Writing Awards is a celebration of talent, bravery, and original voice. All characteristics that are essential for any artist to achieve success. The keynote speaker for this year's Scholastic Award ceremony is Hei Won Son, a rising star in the visual art world and the 2021 winner of the Janet and Walter Sondheim Artscape Prize, one of the largest visual art prize competitions in this region, and it is produced annually by the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts. 
Heiwan is an amazing artist whose work embodies those characteristics of talent, bravery, original voice, and more. She knows all too well the trajectory that you're on and has some inspiring words of encouragement for your journey. Hello, everyone. My name is Heiwan Song. I'm a practicing visual artist and craftswoman coming from South Korea and by the way of Baltimore, currently based in Queens, New York. I'm also a director of board at Baltimore Clayworks, located in Mount Washington, Baltimore, where I work with other great artists and supporters in order to create a creative community centered around ceramic art, diversity, and joy. I'm thrilled to be present here to celebrate everyone's achievement and share some thoughts and words for those who are looking forward to their next steps as emerging young artists. I should not start without saying, Congratulations. Congratulations for having your hard work, unique talent, and artistic vision and being acknowledged through receiving an award. For those who are attending this ceremony in order to celebrate others' achievement, congratulations to you as well. Quoting my best friend and a wise woman, she says, within the community, one person's achievement is everyone's achievement. Therefore, we congratulate everyone and celebrate together. So again, congratulations to everyone. First, for being vulnerable and courageous to put yourself and your work out there. Second, for competing and celebrating as part of such a talented and inspiring group of young artists. Lastly and truly, congratulations for growing through the experience of participating in the Scholastics Awards and within your own artistic path. Last year, I was sitting in a similar position to many of you, where I was fortunate enough to be selected as the winner of 2021 Janet and Walter Sondheim Artscape Prize. The Sondheim Prize being a prestigious prize that acknowledges visual artistic talent of those working in the DMV area. I felt very proud of myself for such achievement, as you all should also be for yourselves. Now, as we are halfway through March of 2022, it has been a little less than a year since I was announced as a finalist and shortly after the winner. So many people have been asking me about how it has been since I won the prize, since I had my first semi-solo museum exhibition, and since I had the chance to share my art to the wider audience of Greater Baltimore, Maryland, and even beyond that. My answer to that question is, it has been a delightful struggle. My career went through ups and downs. There has been moments where I felt stuck in my trajectory, moments I felt like I'm going in the completely wrong direction, moments where I felt deprived of opportunities due to the pandemic, moments of numerous rejections. But on the other side, there were also a lot of moments where unexpected new opportunities came up new ideas and funky ideas emerged, and moments where I met new creative minds in the process of navigating my own failures and struggles. Throughout this less than a year post prize winning period, there, there are two lessons I learned and try to remind myself every time I'm lacking inspiration and confidence in my art. First is that art is a practice and the practice is an act of moving on and moving forward through a sequence of failures and success. Therefore, failure is an integral and crucial part of your art that must be observed and learned from. In such sense, failure is your work and failure itself is an achievement for it is an evidence of experimentation. Evidence is challenging oneself and evidence of growth. I hope everyone to remember failure itself is another success. Second and lastly, I encourage you to let the action that you take and the voice that you utter to define your work more than anything else. You will receive both praises and rejections with your art, more of the latter than the former. However, I believe that it is the beauty of living as an artist that the fact that there will be diverging and even opposing opinions in response to your art. This could be rather confusing, but if you remember that art is a universe that you create for yourself, 
you will further learn that being centered and truthful in your own world and your own art is all that matters. I believe and am happy to see that you, who are the youth and creative future of Maryland and beyond, are taking those actions to progress, break through, and inspire others as well as yourself through your creative vision. Again, thank you for sharing your work and for providing your content, further allowing us to come together to witness and celebrate everyone's growth. Thank you. My name is Bria Williams and I received an American Visions nomination for my mixed media piece titled Not So Little Anymore. This piece is about reflecting on my childhood and how far I've come and grown, which is why it's a mix of a childlike drawing and a more realistic traditional style. Um, the quote in the top left corner is a quote from my dad who passed in 2014. Um, he was a big part of my childhood and his passing was too and so I wanted to include this quote about how proud of me he was even though he didn't see how far I've come and grown. She would go to an extreme of setting alarms on her phone that made Devonie's teeth chatter at the same time each night to always having a new bottle by her bedside the moment she ran out. If you don't take them even for a day you'll die her mother would say every time Devonie would ask but even when death was brought into the question her curiosity still wasn't quenched. Devonie always wondered what would happen if she forgot to take her medicine for a day. Today, Devonie decided would be the day she found out. My name is Yahari Gwe, and I won the American Voices nomination for my short story titled, The Magical Pills. Arcadia is a presenting sponsor for this year's awards, and we are thankful for their commitment to supporting young creatives in Maryland. A special note from Kate Henningsen, Chief Operating Officer at Arcadia. We're thrilled to have partnered with BOPA to recognize Maryland's most creative students. Now more than ever, we need artists and storytellers to remind us that this beautiful planet of ours is worth fighting for. Congratulations to the award recipients. In addition to providing support for writing and visual art workshops in Baltimore City, Arcadia has provided four scholarships this year, two $500 clean energy scholarships and two $150 Emerging Voices and Visions scholarships. Congratulations to Katie Grace O'Connor and Segwa Shin, as they are the recipients of the $500 clean energy Arcadia scholarships, which were given to award recipients in both visual and literary arts whose pieces reflect the importance of taking care of this planet. Arcadia also recognizes Charlotte Roberts and Zoe Saunders, this year's recipients of the Baltimore City $150 Emerging Visions and Voices Scholarship. These scholarships are given to Baltimore City Award recipients whose work exemplifies character, originality, and hope. Congratulations again. 
Hello, my name is Katie Grace O'Connor. I am a seventh grader at Dumbarton Middle School, and I want a silver key for my work, Earth Palms. I wanted to say thank you to BOPA, Scholastic Awards, and Arcadia for giving me the chance to share my work and share the message I was trying to send through my work to more people. You have inspired me to keep writing what I feel passionate about, and someday I hope I can inspire someone like that. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sung Hyshin, and I go to Thomas S. in High School. I received gold keys for my painting, Vertigo, and my digital illustration, Crow on a Power Line. I want to give my sincere thanks to the Scholastic Awards, BOPA, and Arcadia for allowing me to share my art and ideas to the world. Hello, my name is Zoe Saunders. I attend the Baltimore Leadership School for Young Women, and the piece I was awarded for is titled, I Used to Know Her. Thank you to Scholastic Awards, BOPA, and Arcadia for this opportunity. I came out of the woods just in time to see the monster fling itself over the gap as I unflinchingly sprinted towards it. My grip on the sword tightened, bringing a white hue to my knuckles and sweat to my palms. As the pause of the living nightmare met the planet, I lunged. I put all of my strength, my emotions, my spirit into that swing. I was ready to end the monster once and for all. And then everything disappeared. My name is Arby Zabkowski and I received a gold key for my flash fiction piece titled The Practice vs. The Battle. Hi, my name is Jalen Wise and I was awarded a silver key for my poem titled Gone. Gone. The little girl on the side of the milk carton stares back at me with big round eyes. And when I see her on the four o'clock news, I'm forced to remember just how much her smile looks just like mine. And how we went to the same elementary school and wore the same uniform jumper and navy blue hair ribbon and thick plaids, Velcro Mary Janes and regulation socks and no matter how far I get from the fridge, her eyes barrel into my chest like she is trying to trigger something, a memory. It doesn't. I can't remember her name. Question was complicated. Sam didn't like complicated things. He liked simple things, like brushing your teeth or riding a bike or sitting in a chair, which brings him back to the simple plastic one he was currently slumped in. Another irony, he supposed, sitting in a plastic chair facing the street he once skipped across while the burnt remains of Martha's house loomed behind him. God, he needed a drink. My name is Sherry Swain, and I received a gold key award for my short story titled Plastic Chairs. When the teacher turned around, I quietly tapped Joy's back. I could see her notebook over her shoulder. She made excellent notes, but even better doodles. At the hole of her loose leaf was a cat with its mouth wide open, a donut hanging from a string above it. She had a talent for filling emptiness. Looking at my note, she snickered. On the back of it, she began drawing something new. My name is Sue Ann Wren, and I received an honorable mention for my short story titled Matt. I found myself seated in a clumped and tiny office. I did not realize when crystals and droplets of water formed in my eyes. I could not even speak. I heard familiar voices approach and I soon recognized them as the voices of my parents. I immediately wiped any trace of tears. My counselor notified my parents that their daughter had been crying and did not say a word. My parents demanded an answer, so I said, I want to be called Debbie, not Iremide. Their faces became expressionless. I do not want to be called Iremide, I said again. My parents did not utter a word. Silence. My name is Tolu Talabi, and I received an honorable mention for my short story, Alma Africa, African Child, Covered with Flowers. This old portrait is a representation of how I have been made to feel like my reactions to trauma weren't valid or appropriate. I've been told that I'm too sensitive or that I'm too old to cry when I was experiencing periods of depression. 
As I've grown older, I've learned that there are many other people who can relate to this experience and that it is very common within Black and other POC communities. My name is Layla Masu and I have received an American Visions nomination for my painting title, My Mind Matters. Hello everyone. I love writing stories since I was in elementary school. I like making other people feel good about themselves. What inspires me is the beauty of nature, the mystery of life, and the supernatural. My name is Brendan Luwaneg, and I received honorable mentions from my stories lurking from the otherworldly shadows and the bees of the Caribbean Isles. Thank you everyone. What inspires me to create is that I'm able to define the world around me and how I see and how I perceive it. I'm also able to create poems that no one's seen, heard, or even dreamed of. My name is Cheyenne Brown. I won the Gold Key Award for my poem entitled, In the Eye of the Beholder. For me, I find inspiration in simple and beautiful things. Laughing with friends, feeling emotions come and go like ocean waves, or hearing rain tap at my window at night. In all of these moments, I find a poem waiting to be acknowledged and written. My name is Elise Chang, and I received a Silver Key Award for my poem titled The Many Reflections of Rain, and an Honorable Mention Award for my poem titled Void. Thank you so much for this opportunity to write. Hello, my name is Natalia Battle, and I received a Gold Key Award for my digital art piece titled I Just Need a Break. What inspires me to create is the ability to inspire others and to express my feelings during these crazy times that we are living in through my art pieces. Hello, my name is Passion Carter. My painting titled The Boy with the Silenced Cry. And what inspires me to be so creative and expressive in my work and so is social media platforms and my surroundings like Pinterest, Instagram, Google, photos, life experiences, etc. I would see things I like or can relate to and it makes me want to draw how I feel about it in my perspective. And once I gather my thoughts together and form a and form a picture in my head, they create artwork in real life. Thank you. My name is Brittany Samana Jay and I've received the American Visions nomination for my photography titled Your Landscapers. I work with black and white portraiture and with my parents as a subject, I want to express the idea of being confined in our understanding where we fail to recognize the complexity of other people's lives and other people's experiences. Um, to the viewer, these are just landscapers or workers, but to me, it's more personal. And I just want to express my background to you guys. Thank you for joining us today. Please be on the lookout for our virtual online exhibition where you can see all of the gold, silver, and honorable mentions. This exhibition will be available to view on Monday, March 14th. More information can be found at www.promotionandarts.org. BOPA is a 501c3 and relies on the support of our partners and donors to make our programs possible. At this time, I would like to thank our esteemed panel of jurors, keynote speaker, Heiwan Son, the Alliance of Young Artists and Writers, the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts staff, the Nora Roberts Foundation, Blick Arts Materials and Utrich Supplies, and our presenting sponsor, Arcadia, for their commitment to serving young artists through their support of the Maryland Region Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. Please consider supporting our work. A tax-deductible donation to the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts helps to ensure that we can continue to provide meaningful programming and recognition for creative teens in every discipline. On behalf of the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts, thank you again for watching. See you next year, hopefully in person. Mm -hmm.